Oh, we've been hearing a lot about the positive powers of mindfulness lately, but what is it and why is it so important? With me, I have Peter Crompton, principal of Ficino School, where mindfulness has been practiced for over 20 years. Good morning to you. Good morning, Matt. 20 years. You're so ahead of the game there, weren't you? Yeah. Um, what exactly is mindfulness? So mindfulness is really about uh, keeping your attention on what's in front of you now. So as adults, during a working day, we easily get distracted. We easily, our mind wanders. And before we know it, we find our attention's completely somewhere else. Oh, absolutely. Particularly with devices and things. We yeah. all have that inability to focus, don't we? Yeah, that's right. So, so mindfulness is, is really about, you know, we, we live in a very busy world. Um, it's a, a world full of distractions and, uh, you know, that's not going to change anytime soon. So mindfulness is really about filtering out those distractions and mm. about um, bringing your attention to where it needs to be and then just simply being in the present. But then people also talk about multitasking, don't they, and say that's a good thing. So is that is mindfulness the opposite of multitasking? Should we not be doing that? Um, that's right. I mean, multitasking is a misnomer because actually you can't really multitask. You can, you can actually only give your attention to one thing at a time. So what's really happening is your attention's flicking from one thing to the other thing to the other thing, and that's not efficiency. That is so true very accurate uh, mindfulness has become a bit of a buzzword lately too but it's nothing new to you at Ficino school no we've been teaching mindfulness to primary school children for um, over 20 years and um, we've seen the value in terms of um, children just being able to maintain their focus and their energy levels throughout the day mm. and what's more they they really positively engage with their learning a, Particularly now with all the devices yeah, and stuff yeah, with kids. There's, there's so many distractions. Because we're yeah. bad enough as adults, with children find it really ha hard to switch off from that. So yeah. how do you teach them then to do this? So that's, it's very simple. Just at the beginning and end of every lesson, we have a simple exercise called the pause. So I like to think of it as a full stop in a sentence. So the children just close their eyes, um, they, they sit up straight, and they, they just uh, connect with their senses really. So they feel their feet on the floor, um, they notice the touch of their clothes on their skin, they just feel the air on their face and hands and then they listen and they just listen to the sounds around them but not to what's going on in their head. Mm. And when we finish that, um, they're, they're completely ready for a lesson uh, and they're not bringing any baggage with them. That's the, the great thing. What if they are, because I know when I try to do anything like this, turning off that little voice in your head that goes, oh, this, 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 how do you, how do you quieten that? Just yeah. practice? Y yeah, it is really. But um, I find certainly connecting with the sense of touch with your body, just feet on the floor is a really, really good way because it, it anchors you mm -hmm. and grounds you and then listening, not to what's going on in your head, but to what's going on outside. And it just does take a bit of practice, but not much. Mm, I remember doing this at Intermediate about 100 years ago. Really? <laughs> I mean, it's really similar, it was, and it was great, and I still remember it to this day. So <laughs> do you think it actually helps with the children's behaviour? Oh, definitely. Listen, um, you know, uh, EQ is something that's talked about a lot now, and mindfulness definitely helps with emotional intelligence, and really, um, you know, having strong emotional intelligence is going to sort any behavioural difficulties or mm. issues. Well yeah. that's the thing isn't it, the emotional intelligence is very very important because they can find anything out they want really online mm. so they need to know how to deal with everything yeah, that they yeah, find absolutely. out. Absolutely yeah. So what do the students think of it and how does it benefit them? <laughs> well funnily enough in preparation for today I asked a class of seven year olds uh, what, how they found the pause benefited them and one of them said to me um, the pause just brings me into the present and another one said, it makes all the silly things go away and all the calm things come in, which I just thought was a brilliant answer. That is perfect. Only from teach, the seven-year-olds. They could teach adults a thing or two, actually. So have parents yeah. noticed the benefits of practising mindfulness with their children? Yeah, definitely. Look, we've all noticed um, that we, we, we get quite high academic results at the school, and that's definitely related to the mindfulness. But even more than that, we have a lot of children that um, uh, study music and also sport. And what we find is in high-pressure situations, they perform really well. Mm. So, um, so yeah, from that, from that point of view, it's, it's excellent. And everybody can see those benefits. Why do you yeah. think that is? Why do they perform so well? Um, I think they're just centred in themselves. They've just got a sense of who they are because whenever you can be still, you, you, you are calm and you're centred in yourself. And calms then, the panic. And you don't bother about what everybody else is thinking or saying. So, mm. yeah. Do you practise it yourself? I do, yeah. <laughs> so how many, how, many, how many parents, do you think, have taken this on too with their, their kids uh, doing it? Well, interestingly, <laughs> some of the children go home and teach it to their parents and insist that before they eat a meal, they pause. So it's excellent and the parents love it. Yeah. Do the teachers do it as well? Yeah, they do. We, all, we, all, we do it together with the children. So it's not, um, they learn it very quickly and the teacher can close their eyes completely in a classroom and the children are quiet and they're just used to it. It's just part of the, part of the fabric. It's such a fantastic thing. And what about as a parent, if you want to reinforce that mindfulness at home, what can you do? 
Well, I think yeah, that's a, that's a huge topic because mm. um, life at home is very different than life at school. Um, but I, I think probably three things I'd say is just just in terms of mindfulness, get out more in nature, keep away from the devices. And I would say for under five year olds, um, you should virtually have no devices yeah, because good luck that, with that one. Yeah. That's yeah. Well, that's when the brain's developing the most. And the third thing is um, for them to uh, work or do things with their parents where their parents aren't distracted because children learn most from real examples. Yeah, and that is the thing too yeah. because as parents we are also busy and we are also not immune to being distracted by our phones as well. That's right, yeah. And okay. that's, what, that's the example the children see. Go and have yeah. a walk on the grass and then close our eyes and practice a bit of mindfulness. Excellent. <laughs> now if they can't be at Ficino School, where else could they learn mindfulness? Um, listen, a lot, quite a lot of schools across Auckland are taking it up. Um, and in different ways. Some of them, it, you know, it might last for a short time or come in as a, as a unit, but um, we've just got it completely embedded in the culture. Uh, we've been doing it for 20 years before and after every lesson. Sounds so. fantastic. Talk mm. about being ahead of the game. What a <laughs> hipsters. Mindful before <laughs> mindfulness was an actual thing. Hey, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, you can learn more about Ficino School and about their inclusion of mindfulness into their classrooms on their website, or you can head along to talk to the staff in person on the next school tour this coming Friday. That is November 9th.